Vasishta continued, This mighty tree known as creation, which yields the sweet and bitter fruits of happiness and unhappiness, or good and evil, ceases the moment the ego sense is known to be false. He who knows the ego sense to be false, and who thereby gains the state of perfect equanimity, never again comes to grief. We've been hearing about how the notion of an ego, an ego sense, is no different from the notion of an external world. They're notions which arise together. This is how we develop, this is how we're educated. As we grow up from being toddlers, we gradually learn there's a me here and a world out there. It's something we're taught. One wonders if this understanding would arise naturally if we were left to our own devices without any education. But I think to the extent that we need to learn language and all the rest of it, this probably would happen anyway. So we've got this ego sense. Sometimes the these teachings with their emphasis on bliss can seem a little bit selfish. We hear about a realized yogi sitting in unassailable bliss. It's like they've disappeared into their own private nirvana. And it seems selfish. But they've given up all ideas of self, all notions of self. It's the sense of a self which gives rise to anxieties, to notions of things we like, to notions of things we don't like, worries about not getting what we like, or worries about getting what we don't like. And we build up all this anxiety over a sense of ourself. The ego sense. This is the ego sense. But that goes, and all the anxiety that goes along with it goes. And it might seem like a, an incredibly unachievable thing, but it is the condition of young children. It's the condition of young children. The toddlers I was talking about are perfectly happy, finding everything wonderfully fascinating. So there's nothing unusual about this condition. And in a way, it's, our, it's a natural progression. We go from the condition of being a, a child to somebody that's learned how to survive in the world, who's acquired certain notions. And the next step then is to divest ourselves of our notions or to realize the best of both worlds, to realize that the reality, which we consider reality, is no more than notional. And to have that bliss and freedom from care which arises when we don't have these notions. So this bliss actually arises out of selflessness, not selfishness. So this is a bliss. Well, there's no ego sense, how can there be anything else? When self-knowledge dispels the ignorant notion of the ego sense, the ego sense which till then was believed to be a solid reality disappears and one does not know where it goes. We don't know where it goes any more than we know where a dream goes. Neither does one know with the prime mover of the body, which had also been assumed to be a solid reality, goes. The prime mover of the body. Is this different from the ego sense? We can say things like, look, look at what I can do. I have this wish, this non-corporeal wish to move my hand. And I'm doing it, look, isn't this amazing? All life forms can do this. All life forms can move their appendages. But what we've got as human beings, we've got this little bit of froth which actually says we can do it. A cat, when its food bowl is put out, will head with every intention towards that food bowl and get its snout stuck in. But we can do the same, but what we will do is we'll say, I am going to eat now. This bit of froth, this bit of froth called the mind, has made a story out of it. It's made a story out of conceiving of an I, an I doing something. I am going to eat. I 
I'm happy. I am interacting with the world out there. We've created this story. And this story gives us notions about ourselves. It gives us notion about a prime mover, prime mover in the body, notions of an incorporeal self governing our material body. Then we create notions of free will and it becomes important to understand whether we've got free will or not and that it's important to have free will. And this feeling that it's important to have free will is, is the same ego sense. It's the ego sense trying to protect itself. If I said there's no such thing as free will, people would find that statement very oppressive, very confrontational, and seek to argue with it. Why? So maybe this free will is the prime mover of the body. But it goes as well. It's another notion. The leaf draws to itself the moisture from the earth and the sun evaporates it and turns it into subtle water vapour. And this has been explained in parenthesis. The leaf is the body. It draws to itself the moisture, the ego sense. It's a natural process. We suck in notions to fuel this ego sense. Self-knowledge, which results from self-inquiry, shows us there's no substance to this ego sense. And this self-knowledge enables to realize it's only Brahman that's going on. In the absence of the self-knowledge, however, the seed of ego sense expands into a mighty tree in the twinkling of an eye. For in the seed is hidden the entire tree with all its innumerable branches, leaves, flowers and fruits. The men of wisdom perceive that the entire creation is hidden in the ego sense. So the creation is the notion of an external world. They arise together, these notions of an ego sense and an external world creation, they arise together and they're both illusory, non-substantial, notional. They're stories.